hey cats, what's happening? It is a beautiful morning and it's a little cooler. I try to get this heavier work done in the morning while the while it's cool because in the afternoons it heats up. Beautiful day, blue sky. I'd much rather be out on the motorcycle taking a nice fall ride. As you can see, some of the leaves are starting to turn color already and many of them are dropping to the ground already. Uh, but we have a long way to go to uh, get to the full autumn color. But one of the priorities here living out in the country and heating with firewood is I have to get I have to get firewood and I have to have it ready to go uh, before the weather turns sour to heat the house. Now I have a nice big buckwood burning stove that if I keep the fire going, and usually I keep the fire going in there 24-7 during the winter, uh, it keeps the house very comfortable. Uh, but if I'm going to leave or go somewhere, <clears throat> um, I have to supplement it with a furnace, and I do have a furnace in there. Now what I've done in the past is there's some Amish mills within 20-30 minutes from here. And I've taken my truck and I go to the Amish mill and it used to be that I could get a whole heaping truckload for 20 bucks. Now you can't find a bargain like that anywhere for a load of wood. Uh, they've up, up the price though now. Um, you'll be lucky to get a truckload for $35. Now the other problem with the Amish mill is, you know, when I first started uh, hauling my firewood from the Amish mill, there was plenty of it there to, to uh, load. But as each year went by, uh, it, more people were finding out about it. And so the pile was dwindling very quickly. And sometimes I'd drive all the way out there and they wouldn't have any firewood left. Um, and then it got to the point where I'd go to get firewood and there'd already be people there loading and there really wasn't any place for me to back in and load so I had to wait until they pulled out and then I could pull in and by then the pile was pretty picked over so I haven't gone to the Amish mill this year because I thought boy every year it's progressively gotten worse and worse and worse and the odds of me getting a load of wood have have dwindled considerably uh, and then again, it's it's slab wood, so some pieces aren't very thick, and you really have to pick through the pile to get some bigger chunks. And I thought, well, okay, I'm going to do a little research and and consider buying a, a load of, of wood. And I found a local guy uh, south of here that works on a large uh, produce farm and they've been cutting some of the tree lines back for their agricultural property. And so he said they have tons of firewood and they have a lot more coming. They'll be cutting down more trees and splitting wood. Uh, so he gave me a real bargain on a whole dump truck load of wood. And uh, I'm gonna see when I stack it, but it looks way over a cord. Uh, and the price was actually cheap for a cord of wood. So I'm pretty happy with that. And no, I'm not going to divulge where I got it from or who I got it from because I don't want to, you know, find out that, he, oh, I don't have any because I got sold out. I need to depend on this guy for wood now. It's the best thing I got going. But anyway, you know, it, uh, I do supplement with propane. So, I, my propane tank is back behind the shed there. I have this 500 gallon tank, and to, re, to fill it, if it's empty, is a couple thousand dollars. Uh, so, I really try not to use a lot of propane if I don't have to. Uh, that's why I, I spend most of my time burning wood because of the expense of propane. Now there is this copper line that runs underground all the way up to the house. And on the corner of the house is the uh, regulator. So you see the line comes in and then the propane goes into the house. 
Now, because I burn wood, I only have to get a refill on this tank once a year. And when they do fill it, I think uh, there, there's still plenty in there because I, I don't use a lot of propane. My basic propane usage is from my water heater and maybe a little bit from the gas range. Uh, so I don't use a lot of propane. If I was going to run my furnace 24-7, it would eat that whole tank up and then some over a winter. So it would cost me thousands of dollars to heat the house if I was going to do it strictly with propane. That's why my wood burner is a much better option. Uh, at my age, though, you know, it's not easy uh, procuring the wood, getting it stacked on the porch, and getting it ready for winter, and going through this whole thing. But it's a necessity when you live out here. It's something that you just have to put yourself to do. Uh, maybe the day will come where I can't, uh, uh, don't have the health to do that anymore. But right now I'm still pretty healthy and it's still uh, very, I wouldn't say easy, but it's a chore that I can handle. Now, I had to get a propane uh, delivery yesterday. My annual delivery came. And the, guy, the truck backed in. It was a big tanker truck and it backed up here. And the guy was sitting there for like 15 minutes. And I, I came outside to see what was going on. He was checking this pressure valve. And he said, I got some bad news for you. And I said, what's that? He says, well, you got a, a propane leak right here at the house. So uh, right here where it threads on to the pipe, it was leaking. And he sprayed some uh, soap on there, and you could see it bubbling up. And I said, oh, man. Uh, he says, well, because you, you have a leak there, I can't refill your tank. And I said, well, good grief, I, I got I got to have uh, my tank topped off for the winter. Uh, I, I, you know, what am I supposed to do? He said, well, let me get on the phone and see what we can do for you. So he went over to his truck, and he was on, in his truck for 15, 20 minutes just sitting there uh, with his air conditioner on, you know. And and so I went in the house and was piddling around and... and uh, I came out a little later and he had the hose dragged out and he was filling my tank. So I went over there and I said, what's happening? And he said, well, I had to lock out your tank. <clears throat> and because it's locked out and you can't use it, I can go ahead and fill it. <clears throat> but it's not connected to the house. I, I, I locked that out. I turned it off to your house. So he said, right now you don't have any propane to the house. And I said, well, what am I supposed to do now? He said, well, I contacted our service department and he said, actually, this guy can come out here in an hour or two and he'll fix it for you. I said, wow, that's awesome. Uh, so he left and about an hour later, here came the service guy with his truck and he put a brand new regulator on the side of the house, fixed the leak, checked everything else and... Uh, I'm good to go. And they, he told me no, no charge for the repair either. So I was happy about that. Stress free, easy peasy. You know, that's the way I like things to go uh, because I don't need any stress in my life. I have enough stress. You know, I was t uh, telling you that I got, uh, in, in my one of my last videos, how I got scammed uh, on a, uh, an internet uh, scam and and fell uh, to that well wouldn't you know it uh, I got three messages from three different guys uh, saying that they were uh, cyber techs computer experts and that they could get my money back for me they said it would only take a couple days and I could have the money put right back into my account. Well, let me back up a little bit. When they, when I got scammed, the scammer told me we can use PayPal to to collect the money. Uh, when you when you do it uh, pu 
put it under family and friends. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't ever pay anybody out through PayPal, so I was totally ignorant of the fact that if you use family and friends to pay someone, there's no chance of ever getting your money back, no refund. Uh, if you go with the standard method of using PayPal and paying someone, PayPal can refund your money if you get scammed. Well, I got, you know, scammed hook, line, and sinker, and being ignorant of how PayPal works, you know, I, I went with the family and friends, so there's no chance of me getting my money back. But anyway, the scammer says, oh, I can get your money back for you. <laughs> and when I say scammer, yeah, it was just another scam. I didn't get scammed, but I, I quizzed him a little bit. And he says, well, all I'm going to need for you to start with is $20 for this uh, fee that I have to have to get started with the investigation to get your money back. And I said, if you think I'm going to pay you one red cent, you're out of your mind. I said, I'm not about to get scammed again. Well, he went into this big spiel about, I'm not a scammer, I'm just here trying to help you. And I, I said, you know, nobody goes to that degree to help someone for no reason when you don't even know who the person is. I mean, that right there is obvious, you know. I mean, he's going way overboard, like, hey, all I want to do is help you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, I don't know this guy from Adam. I don't know where he lives. I don't know who he is. I don't know anything about him. And he's trying to convince me that he's going to help me. Uh, right there's a red flag. So, no, I didn't get scammed again. And I lost my $100, and I'm not getting it back. I don't expect to ever see that again. It was just a hard lesson learned. And uh, at least I will try to be wiser about doing online uh business uh, if I will even ever do it again period because I think I've learned my lesson Kind of reminds me of those videos you see of like East India where they have the trucks or the carts and they stack them so full that they look like they're going to tip over. I'm trying to get as much on a load as I can without breaking this little red wagon down. A cord of wood is uh, four foot high, eight foot long, by four foot wide. So if I measure here, I'm at a good uh, four foot there in height, and then I've got uh, 12 foot long, so that's eight foot plus another four foot. If I double this row, you know, stack it uh, another row like I got started here. That'll be a cord. Uh, and that's what most people are selling it for. So, I got all that stacked this morning. I still have all that out there left to stack on the porch. So I'm sure that I'll have a cord and then some. Uh, you know, once it's all piled up there. now. I, if I if I did only eight foot by four foot, that would bring me clear out here 
and I still got to get you know through here so that's why I'm going to do 12 foot out and do two stacks uh, of, of 12 foot and that'll give me a full cord uh, and then I should have even more by because by looking at that pile there's still quite a bit there and uh, you know I'm, I'm sure that's going to make more than a cord too uh, most of the uh, uh, woods uh, cordwood suppliers around here are going to charge uh, anywhere between I don't know 250 300 350 dollars depending on what you get and where you get it from and they always tack on a delivery charge on top of that which some of them don't tell you about uh, and it usually could be, you know, twenty or thirty dollar delivery charge on top of your wood charge. Uh, this guy charged me two hundred and fifty bucks for the, the truckload with no delivery charge, <laughs> and he said, you know, he'd be willing to haul me more anytime I want. So I'm pretty happy with that, and uh, I think that's going to take me through a good part of the winter, anyways. So. Uh, if not the whole winter I may need a little more wood and I still have a pretty good stack over there on the other side of the garage too that I, I keep for emergency supplemental wood over there too so and then aside from that I mean I've got five and a half acres here and I've got you see a lot of it's forested right here behind the garage are two dead elm trees that's firewood and everywhere around my property there's more firewood so you know, worse comes to worse, I just break out the chainsaw and I cut myself some wood. Uh, having it split and delivered is the easy way out. Saves me a lot of time, a lot of energy, and uh, I'm thankful for that. Because for me to cut all of that wood, split it, and then haul it and stack it, that's a lot of work, so it's worth paying to have somebody haul it for me. Well, cats, I sure appreciate your support and for watching my videos. Thank you very much. Uh, I keep all you guys in my prayers as usual. Thank you very much for your wonderful comments and for uh, giving me great tips uh, throughout the, the t over, over the many, many videos that I put out. Uh, you guys have given me a lot of valuable information, and I truly appreciate that. I'm not the, the, the brightest light bulb in the bank, but uh, I do okay. But it sure helps to have people that are knowledgeable in certain things uh, that, that, you know, give me some tips and some guidance. So, yeah, please leave your comments if you feel uh, worthy of doing that, and, and I sh certainly appreciate that. If you haven't yet, give me that thumbs up and please subscribe and uh, join me on some more wonderful, thrilling, exciting adventures in this life of mine <laughs> for, for all it's worth. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you all later.